today's ever-changing society, with so many advances in technology, it is questionable as to whether or not our personal information is truly safe, and who should and should not have access to various information. That's, that's really the $64,000 question. Should the government be able to get access to our information? Um, there are legitimate reasons, and, and we've always kind of recognized that in, in our West, Western culture, this balance between the, the rights of the individual, privacy rights, things of that nature, and the rights of the government to have access to information that can protect the citizens in general. Um, the government can go into a bank and ask for your bank records if they think that you've been involved in some kind of illegal activity. Uh, they can go to your internet service provider um, and ask, uh, ask for information about you if they think that there's been, say, child pornography being transmitted through that service and things like that. So in, in certain instances, there are legitimate concerns. So um, it's, it's this delicate balance that we walk all the time. And every new technology introduces a new twist on this. Um, you know, we've, we've known about wiretaps and phones for a century now. Now we just have a new variation on that with personal devices um, coming into the mix. So everything that is related to Cabrini students is hosted on-site or at an off-site that only Cabrini employees have access to. So there's nothing hosted third party, and that's actually a federal law called FERPA that you're not allowed to have that information where other parties would have access to it. Um, staff also have passwords that reset in a certain period of time so that if they were compromised and they did have access to student information, someone would lose that access if they did have it. Um, and then we, general guidelines that most companies follow, we uh, use as well. Uh, there probably aren't a lot of people out there that are trying to hack into Cabrini's uh, systems in order to get access to your personal information. Um, banks and financial institutions, on the other hand, government uh, agencies, things like that, those are really the targets of um, malicious attempts to gain access to information. Unfortunately, some students and staff at Cabrini have had instances where their information was compromised. The first time my dad used eBay, his credit card information got stolen from using a site. I've had credit card information compromised, and I've had others in that situation, but not on a technical scale, actually. I've seen a few incidents on campus where um, people have uh, gotten a virus or something that's locked their information, but they haven't actually lost their information to another party. My information was stolen. My Facebook got hacked. Um, you know, it was okay in the sense because I just started. I didn't really have a lot of things on there, not too many pictures, things I wasn't upset about losing. but. For sure, just the fact of the process that I had to make another Facebook account, I had to make sure that everything on there wasn't popping up in random places at other websites. It's just really in the way, you know what I mean? And um, I know each social media group is different, but for Facebook, I mean, for the most part, they're okay. But it just, it took a while, you know what I mean? And it kind of put me off of Facebook for a minute. You know? I feel like my personal information is safe, especially on my computer, because my dad has installed many different apps and extensions for my internet browsing that protect my information. Well, I don't know if a lot of people look, but on certain um, certain websites, it'll say like HTTP, and then if it says S, then that means that the website is secure. So like if I'm getting ready to buy shoes or bag or something, I want to make sure that at the top it says S. If it doesn't say S, then it doesn't mean, it means that the, like another third party can look in on your information and possibly steal your identity. Anything you have control over, I feel safer using. Um, if you, you know, put your information on Google Cloud or Microsoft 365 or any of those, you lose that control over it. You don't know who has access to it. Um, that can happen with any device, but my personal computer, anything that's on there, I generally feel more secure. Students and staff at Cabrini take various precautions to make sure that their information stays safe. To make sure my information is safe on my laptop, I use Adblocker. I also use incognito mode when I use Google Chrome so it doesn't keep my history. And I also have an extension on my internet that makes me aware of any bad sites that would potentially steal my information. I really don't feel like my information is safe at all on my devices. I try to keep a limited amount of important information on my phone. Um, 
I don't save a lot of my passwords. I know like I have an iPhone and there's like um, like a password bank. You can keep it in there so you don't have to keep typing things in. That's okay. I'll, I'll take the 30 seconds and I'll, I'll type it in. It's not a big deal. Um, change your password if you know that it's your password that's been compromised. If it's credit card information or financial information, you should inform those institutions so that they can keep track on it and let you know if somebody happens to make a purchase using that. But generally changing your password and contacting um, whatever company or institution or business that you feel your account's been compromised for. Don't keep a lot of information on, especially a phone, if you lose that and you don't have it protected, all that information's out there. Um, you know, if you're getting emails that look like people asking for your password, check who it's coming from. Even if it says Cabrini College in the body of the message, check and see the at field. It may be from somebody who's not. Uh, in general, just know where your information is. I tell my students, uh, treat your phone, treat your email, treat any kind of technology as essentially public information because um, under the right circumstances, that information can be accessed. And so, um, you know, always be careful with what you write, what you say, what you put out there, because you may think it's private, but ultimately there are ways in the system in order to, to gain access to that.